Hello everyone, welcome to a performance test in Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. I recently upgraded my graphics card from an RTX 2070 to an RTX 4070. I did a video in KSP1 where I showed the effects of that in RSS Reborn and it did very well. But you might have been wondering if you watched that video or whether you haven't watched that video, what the effect would be on our EVE rocket. Right, it was very slow, it was very cumbersome, and had a lot of lag on liftoff. And we still have it exploding when we bring it outside here. But let's actually take a look at how quickly the explosion happens. <laughs> I guess that's another benchmark. Explosion quickness. Uh, this is many hundreds of parts. I'll get to exactly how many parts once we add some extra struts. Uh, for the actual launch, but this is how the explosion looks when it decides to explode when we bring it out to the launch pad and Even though it's really really slow. I think it is actually faster than it was before uh, It took a lot longer to explode and had a lot more lag so uh, a Performance improvement as far as it coming apart is concerned, but how about the actual launch? as we see there, yeah, I think that that was shorter. But okay, I decided to revert to launch to see if that would work out. It didn't. Uh, it still broke apart. So sometimes if you just revert to launch, it's okay. But I decided to add some more struts. So I think probably I did add some more struts on the actual launches with this. I just accidentally saved the version without those extra struts. And we have 551 parts in total now that those struts are added. Remember, the struts are two parts apiece, so it's a lot. And here we go. Now it's stable and we can launch. Now previously with the RTX 2070, the physics rate was 6 real-time seconds to 1 in-game second. And the frame rate was not worth talking about. <laughs> um, uh, I don't have a frame rate uh, counter here, but you can watch the previous videos as part of the, the main For Science series and see what kind of rate it was. But basically the RTX 4070 is supposed to have twice the performance of the RTX 2070, so we're expecting twice the frame rate. And as far as frame rate is concerned, uh, it seems to be about right. It's just that we're going from like two frames per second to four frames per second or something like that It does seem a little bit better uh, However, the physics rate is not better and if we take a look at this launch and I'll be presenting the Launch not at length not the full launch but large segments of the launch so that you can sort of see that it is still in fact six seconds real time to one second in game. Now in KSP1 the physics rate was bound to the CPU more and I'm not upgrading my CPU. My CPU is an i5-12600K and when you see i5 you think that that's a little bit weak compared to an i7. In the weird case of the i5-12600K it's not. Uh, its maximum clock speed without being overclocked is 4.9 gigahertz. And you'd be hard pressed to get something too much better than that. It's still the best sort of uh, manufacturing process, 10 nanometers and stuff like that. So even with the latest generation i7, uh, you can probably get 5.6 gigahertz uh, with you know the same architecture. So you can expect somewhat better performance with that. But when we're talking about six to one ratio as far as the phys physics rate is concerned, maybe you could get four seconds to one or something like that probably more like five seconds to one. Uh, so upgrading your CPU isn't going to be super helpful uh, if you're looking at that. And when KSP2 came out uh, initially into early access, of course, uh, there was a lot of angst about the graphics card requirement. The graphics card isn't going to help you too much as far as the physics rate is concerned. So in fact, it doesn't help at all upgrading from an RTX 2070 to an RTX 4070. So. If what you're having is the physics lag, that's not the problem. Uh, if you are having the frame rate, well, well, on a vehicle like this, does uh, considering how long it's going to take to get to orbit, does it really matter how many frames you're getting? I don't know. Uh, but I guess it's somewhat more pleasant to get the extra frames. I think the video card requirements are mainly for the VRAM, and as long as you have 8 gigabytes of VRAM, maybe even 6 gigabytes of VRAM, it'll be all right. But if you have less than that, it'll probably grind a little bit because it's sending the graphics into the regular RAM, which is a little bit slower. So that, that was my conclusion here. And 
yeah. It's not actually using much of my CPU. As far as the cores are concerned, it's still limited to very few threads, and the maximum usage on a single thread was only 70%. So at least that's what it seemed to be. Uh, I don't know exactly how these things work, but uh, overall the CPU is being used as, at a rate in Task Manager of 25%. That's including OBS recording this, and I was streaming it at the same time, and I had the browser open and all that business. So it wasn't really taxing my CPU. It's just the game. <laughs> Basically, as far as the physics rate is concerned, it's sort of just the game. Uh, there's no avoiding that. So hopefully we'll get performance improvements down the road. This does contrast the situation in KSP1 with RSS Reborn that I had in a previous video where the actual physics rate was improved by the new graphics card. And that was because the graphics were actually causing the lag to the physics, basically. It was being graphics bound with RSS Reborn. A weird situation in KSP1, but that was because of the intensity of the graphics involved. That's not the case in KSP2. It took 24 minutes and 17 seconds to get to orbit and the launch clock had us at about 4 minutes when I shut off the engines, so those were my results. And with that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.